One of the cards you're getting this month is a combination stitch card and it is for the buttonhole blanket stitch stitch variations. You've learned every stitch that we're going to use on those. It's just combining them. So the first thing I've done is I have stitched a curvy blanket stitch here and then on every other, the top of every other stitch I'm going to put two lazy daisies And then between the two of them, I'm going to put a French knot. There's my French knot coming up. I'm doing a three wrap one. That's up to you how many you want. So I will go all the way down the line on every, the top of every one of these and put my two lazy daisies and a French knot. Now we're going to come back and on the bottom of each of these where we put the lazy daisies on the top, we're gonna to put two more lazy daisies at the bottom and I have changed colors. And then we're gonna do a cluster of um, French knots and what the picture shows is three at the top and then two and then one and one and a straight stitch. So that's what I did. Feel free to mix colonial knots in here if you want to. And that last lazy daisy I did was pretty sloppy. And you can pack these in close together. You could space them out a little bit. It's up to you, what look you want. So it'd be really sweet on a little girl's dress or on a pillowcase. I am using um, pearl cotton. It would probably look even nicer done with floss. Just, I went one French knot and then the last knot I did was a colonial knot on my first one. My knots are really sloppy here. And then a straight stitch. And that finishes that cluster, so you just move on across and do all of them. So that's one combination stitch that you got. Okay, the next one off that combination stitch card starts with a nice, it needs to be fairly wide buttonhole stitch. And the reason it needs to be wide is because you're gonna be putting two lazy daisies in between each one. So once you have your buttonhole stitch, we're gonna come back and put a group of three lazy daisies on the horizontal portion, the bottom, or the... So I do one that comes straight down from the leg, and then the two that are on each side of the leg need to have a fairly sharp angle so that you're gonna be able to fit them in, two of them between those vertical legs. So you're just going to continue putting those groups of lazy daisies all the way down. Then we're going to come back and at the end of the leg we're going to add two straight stitches which as we learned is an arrowhead stitch.
So all the way down. The final thing this combination stitch has is two French knots. The picture kind of shows one right below your V. So I'm kind of doing it over the top of the um, end of the blanket stitch. And then one up above the V. You could stack them both above the V if you wanted to. My best one was this first one where they're butted right together. So. East. These two kind of have a gap, which I don't think is ideal. But you just keep doing that all the way down, and that's that combination stitch. The next combination stitch is, a, is worked on a base of a blanket stitch that's alternating back and forth. Um, I haven't really shown that before, but, and remember, I tend to work my blanket stitch opposite of how the card says. So you're just you're keeping your horizontal in the middle. But other than that, it's just like a blanket stitch. I come up on the line, make sure my thread's under my needle. And I go over for the next one. Again, come up on the line, make sure the thread's under the needle. And just work that the length of the line. And when you get it as long as you want, you're just going to tack off over the top of that. Now we're going to just come back down the line, working our angled straight stitches, or they are actually arrowhead stitches, on our vertical portions of our blanket stitch. could have worked it so your blanket stitch had a longer leg or you can work your arrow stitches so they're shorter it's up to you so just all the way down the length of your alternating blanket stitch now we're going to come back and add groups of French knots to the ends of our um, our blanket stitch. I'm just doing two wrap ones. The card shows clusters of four French knots, which is what I'm doing here right now. And it's kind of in a diamond pattern. The reason it has to be four, it could be three, two with one stacked on top or it could be just one French knot or it could be just two like that so feel free to play there are probably literally thousands if not more ways that you can combine stitches so don't get stuck with just what you see on the cards. Come up with your own. You can go online and do searches for combina combination searches, I mean stitches. They just, these would be just gorgeous on a crazy quilt.
just work your way down, adding however French, however many French knots you want to the ends of those blanket stitches. Give yourself permission to play. While I was stitching this one, what I was seeing was a row of gifts. And will I ever use it? I don't know. But all it is is a blanket stitch. I came back with a mega big back stitch to close it in, and then the lazy daisies and the um, French knot for the bows. I could certainly use variegated thread, and then the gifts would be different colors. So play around, enjoy yourself.